When he calls on me, I will answer him. I will deliver him and give him glory. I will grant him length of days. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Welcome to Mass on this first Sunday in Lent. We're still at the beginning of Lent, but you should all look bright-eyed and bushy-tailed on a Sunday. Because once you've said Eden song on Saturday, that's heralded it in Sunday. And Sunday's always a feast of the resurrection, whether it's in Lent or Advent or whenever it is. So you can have a gin on a Sunday. So after you've said Eden song on Saturday night, you can have a gin. <laughs> And you can have one before you say Eden song tonight. So, <laughs> see what love the Father has for us. That's why Lent begins on Ash Wednesday. If you count up the days of Lent, there are actually 47. And it's moved to Wednesday so that you get 40 weekdays and 6 or 7 Sundays. So there you are. I don't make it up as I go along, I <laughs> To prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God. Sorry. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have, have sinned against, against you and against our neighbour, in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate faults. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, and bring you to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, mercy. have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, through the yearly observance of Holy Lent, that we may grow in understanding of the riches hidden in Christ, and by worthy conduct, conduct pursue their effects. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing that you have made, and you forgive the sins of all those who have been. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may receive from you the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. So the water shall never again become a flood 
to destroy all things of the flesh. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response is, Your ways, Lord, are faithfulness and love for those who keep your covenant. Your, your ways, Lord, are faithfulness and love for those who keep your covenant. Lord, make me know your ways. Lord, teach me your paths. Make me walk in your truth and teach me. For you are my for you are God, my Saviour. Your ways, Lord, are faithfulness and love for those who keep your covenant. Remember your mercy, Lord, and the love you have shown from of old. In your love remember me because of your goodness, O Lord. Your ways are faithfulness and love. He shows the path to those who stray. He guides the humble in the right path. He teaches his ways to the poor. Your ways, Lord, are faithfulness and love for those who keep your covenant. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Christ himself, innocent though he was, died once for sins, died for the guilty to lead us to God. In the body he was put to death, in the spirit he was raised to life, and in the spirit he went to preach to the spirits in prison. Now it was long ago when Noah was still building the ark which saved only a small group of eight people by water, and when God was still waiting patiently that these spirits refused to believe. That water is a type of the baptism which saves you now and which is not the washing off of physical dirt, but a pledge made to God from a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has now entered heaven and is at God's right hand, now that he's made the angels and dominations and the powers his subjects. The word of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. The Spirit drove Jesus out into the wilderness, and he remained there for forty days, and was tempted by Satan. He was with wild beasts, and the angels ministered to him. After John had been arrested, Jesus went into Galilee. There he proclaimed the good news from God. The time has come, he said, and the kingdom of God is close at hand. Repent and believe the good news. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. In the name of the Father and of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. First of all, a bit of Bible study. St. Mark, you notice, doesn't give us any stories of the temptations. Matthew and Luke tell us about loaves into bread and throwing himself off the pinnacle of the temple and falling down to worship the devil. Though even Matthew and Luke can't agree on the order in which they came. But Mark doesn't tell us any of that. He simply says that Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. That by the Spirit is important. And I want you to bear it in mind through everything I say this morning. 
because that by the Spirit assures us that no matter where we are or what we do, the hand of God is upon us. And more to the point, the angels ministered to him. In his time in the wilderness, Jesus was never alone. He was always under the hand of God and always in the care of the angels. It was promised in the Psalms. He will give his angels charge over thee, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. They're always there. You might find them difficult to believe in. I expect they find it more difficult to believe in you than you find it difficult to believe in them. But they're there and the protection of God is always over us. I wonder why then uh, St Mark didn't tell us any of those stories any more than Mark gives us any Christmas narrative. I've suggested to you before that, I think it was back at St Mark's day, that St Mark's Gospel was probably written in two parts. First of all, the, the Passion narrative was written and then the earlier life of Jesus. But we also believe that St Mark's Gospel was written for a particular community of Jews. It wasn't intended to be a universal message. It was written for one group of Jews in a particular place. And so it would follow that that group of Jews, faithful Jews, would understand without Mark having to relay the story. They'd have it under their belt. As soon as Mark says, Jesus was led of the Spirit into the wilderness, the Jews' immediate reaction would be to think back to the Exodus. And the children of Israel, wandering for how long? 40 years. See, it all links up. Jesus is fulfilling the Old Testament exodus. But as the story goes on, of course, when the, when the wanderings in the wilderness of the children of Israel came to an end, Moses wasn't allowed to lead the children of Israel over the Jordan into the promised land. It was Moses' servant, Joshua, who did that. Just as a sidekick, the name Joshua is the Old Testament version of the name Jesus in the New Testament. Moses didn't lead them in, but Jesus leads us in. As Mark's gospel unravels and we see Jesus taking us through the passion to the resurrection, he takes us into the kingdom of heaven. It's not left to anybody else. Jesus carries us across the river into the promised land. And all that, you see, would have dropped into place with the Jewish congregation to whom Mark was writing, who'd have been steeped in the tradition and the, and the religion of the Jews and their forefathers. They'd also have all the story of the wandering in the wilderness under the belt. Remember the first, uh, Matthew and Luke agree on the first temptation. Do you remember? If you are the Son of God, command these stones that they be turned into bread. Think back to the wandering of the children in the wilderness. They were hungry and thirsty, and they started to gripe at Moses because they wanted food. Moses went to the Lord, and what did the Lord do? He sent manna from heaven, bread in the wilderness. I'm sure that Mark was trying to teach his readers something, but more to the point, I think he was making his point 
that Jesus here is fulfilling the Old Testament wanderings of the children of Israel in the wilderness. I hope that's whetted your appetite because you can think on it. Go back during Lent, I'm giving you a lot to do in Lent, reading the Psalms. Try going back and reading the book Exodus again and see how it all ties up with the, with the, with the passion and the resurrection of Jesus. I'm forever saying you can't understand the Easter mystery unless you've got the story of the Exodus under your belt. They're intrinsically linked. But what does it say to me? Over the last 12 months, I've become aware, as I'm sure you have, of what I want to call my wilderness years. Winston Churchill referred to his wilderness years when the Tory government was de defeated in 1929. That great orator and ex-chancellor of the Exchequer uh, really went into a decline. And when he later wrote his memoirs, or published those, the first part of his memoirs, when he was made First Lord of the Admiralty at the eve of the Second World War, um, Churchill claimed that those wilderness years were sent as a preparation for the great task of his life. And I must admit that I sort of feel some contact there. Retirement came to me as a hideous blow. I never realised how much I would miss a daily altar, a regular congregation and individuals to love and care for. And it was all exacerbated by busting my leg and smashing my ankle and confined me to the house. And then as soon as that was better, we had lockdown. And there were many long hours, as you've had to, of thinking about Silla Black and singing to myself, what's it all about? <laughs> and then comes the call from one Karen Jones and here I am still, and still will be as long as you need me. And I came back to life. I'm still in a bit of boredom. I mean, I've really rock bottom as far as sitting at home and boredom is concerned. I spent 45 quid on a set of Downton Abbey. <laughs> and I'm addicted to it, but I loathe it. It's just one horrible crisis after another. And you can almost write, as soon as the ruddy music starts and you see the faces on it, mean, you know exactly what's going to happen. You know full well that Sybil's going to have a baby, it'll be all right, and then it'll die. You know full well that Lady Mary marries Dishy Matthew, but it's not going to be all right, he's got to die. And now I've just got to the bit where Edith's been for an abortion, changed her mind, sold her kid to shit. Oh, but it's not going to end in joy and happiness. It's all going to end in tears. And all through it all is the Dowager Lady, Dartmouth, I want to say, Dowager Lady Grantham. Grantham. <laughs> Maggie Smith, who never seems to change and refuses to acknowledge the change that's happening around her. And that set me thinking. And he took me back to read Trollope again. And Barchester Towers. And the Warden. And I hear Mr. Slope, the Bishop's chaplain, saying, It's a new world for new men, Archdeacon. And the world is changing around us. 
And we all of us find it difficult to keep up. God, what I'd give to go back to the days when you put a postage stamp on an envelope instead of sending an email. God, what I'd give to be able to speak to a tradesman and say, I want so and so, can you come and do it? Without him saying, go online. How difficult to keep up. But no matter how stubborn, I still use postage stamps. And I still stamp my foot and say, I want to see somebody. But it doesn't make a scrap of difference. Because the powers that are against me in the world are greater than my powers. The order, the old order changes. We need to be moving along with it. In this wilderness year of lockdown and COVID, I hope that we're all evaluating life and deciding what are the important things. I know the top of my list is human contact and human relationships. And one of the things that really concerns me is that the powers that be are going to come to the conclusion that Zoom meetings are more convenient and cheaper to stage than getting people all together in one place to talk face to face. That frightens me. But I think it's likely. Another thing that frightens me is that church congregations have got used to sitting in their armchair with a cup of coffee or a gin and tonic if they're high enough and watching it on the telly conveniently and able to trot to the loo when they want to be. I just worry that that's going to continue. I hope and pray that we're seeing now the value of one another, that we're recognising Jesus in one another, that we're beginning to see how much we depend on our personal contact. I never thought I'd long for the day when we could pass the peace. How I long for it now. And that's one bit of change I'm happy to swallow. So today's gospel has a lot to say to us. We all go through the wilderness. There's one person in particular that I'd remind you of. Well, he didn't really exist. It was a story that Jesus told of the prodigal son. He got lost in the wilderness until he came to himself and went back. And his father welcomed him with open arms. I don't believe that story should be called the prodigal son. I think it should be called the story of the loving father. And there was the bitter older son, you remember, who really didn't think he was fair. But as I've got older, even though I've not got physical children of my own, I've been a parish priest long enough to know the joy of welcoming somebody back. That doesn't mean that one neglects the people who've been constant all the way through. But welcoming somebody back is a completely different experience and a completely different depth of charity. And the father in that story is an illustration for us of the love that the father has for us. Even when we are in our wilderness years, God's loving hand is over us. And the angels are there waiting to minister to us. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You know, God gave me a wonderful gift of the gap. <laughs> he really did. When I looked at that gospel, I thought, blimey, there's nothing there to hang your hat on, is there? <laughs> and then here we are. I'm going to sit down for a shot again. <laughs>
let's stand and profess our faith. We believe in one God, the, the Father, Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternal Father, and Lord of all the saints, who bear the name of Christ. Help all Christians to see beyond the divisions of denomination and tradition and to celebrate the love that you have for all your people. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for our nation, for Elizabeth, for all who are set in authority on the earth. We give thanks for the measure of wealth and comfort that we enjoy. We pray for a fairer distribution of our wealth. We pray for all politicians, those who direct our daily lives. For peace throughout the world. For a fair distribution of the world's wealth. And a better stewardship of our resources. Lord, in your mercy. We pray, Father, for this community. We're all on our electoral roll. And for the return of regular worshippers. Bind us together with cords of love and loyalty. Help us to see you in one another. We pray for our wardens and for all who make it possible to continue worshipping. We give thanks for you all. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. amongst the sick, we pray for Prince Philip, for the Queen in her anxiety, for Kate and Gary Banks, Anne, Linda, Rita and Maddie, Jim Watson, Monica, Adam Jones, Eddie, Dennis, Beryl, Kath Edwards, Rosie.
Rosemary, Sheila Beamish, Pauline Bevan, Joshua, Baby Freddie, Bob, Jane Chester, Margaret Rose, Mike Hampson, and Father Roger Gilbert. For all those in the intensive care units of the hospitals. For the teams administering COVID inoculations. For Matt Hancock and all who work in the NHS. For the care homes of this parish and for their staff. And for all agencies of mercy, we give thanks and pray. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We commend to your gracious keeping the departed, especially those who died in the past week and who've died unprepared or unbelieving. For Stanley Morby of this parish, for those whose anniversaries fall around this time, Harold Spruce, John Phillips, Barbara Bird, and John Paul. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and let thy perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace. And may we in our turn. Share with them in the glory of your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. So we bring our private prayers to the throne of grace. Turning with, with confidence in the power of Our Lady's prayer, we ask her to join her intercession with ours as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Lord of all power and might, you are the author and giver of Craft in our hearts the love of your name. Increase in us true religion. Nourish us with all goodness. And of your great mercy, keep us in the same. Through Christ. Amen. 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 Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And grant her the peace and unity in accordance with your will, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Bless you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. 
it will become the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. Pray, beloved, that this our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his church. Give us the right dispositions, O Lord, we pray, to make these offerings, for with them we celebrate the beginning of this venerable and sacred time through Christ. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. His fast of forty days makes this a holy season of self denial. By rejecting the devil's temptations, he has taught us to rid ourselves of the hidden corruption of evil and so to share his paschal meal in purity of heart until we come to its fulfilment in the promised land of heaven. Now we join the angels and the saints as they sing their unending hymn of praise. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Lord, you are holy indeed, the fountain of all holiness. Let your spirit come upon these gifts to make them holy, so that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Before he was given up to death, a death he freely accepted, he took bread and gave him thanks. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. It will be shed for you and for all people so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of Mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will come again. In memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this life giving bread, this saving cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. May all of us who share in the body and blood of Christ be brought together in unity by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church throughout the world. Make us grow in love together with Michael, our diocesan, Clive, our area bishop, Jonathan, our visitor, and all the clergy. 
Remember our brothers and sisters who have gone to their rest in the hope of rising again. Bring them and all the departed into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all. Make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the Apostles and with all the saints who have done your will throughout the ages. May we praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we have the courage to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share. You take you away my sin in the world, and bless me on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, and bless me on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, and bless us in Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am on the verge of this evening, but let us say the word, and thou shalt be healed.
Keep you all in eternal life. one verse of that lovely hymn, wonderful tune. The tune is called Westminster Abbey, written by Henry Purcell when he was August of Westminster Abbey, which you're going to sing it at my funeral. <laughs> because verse 2 says, Oh how glorious and resplendent, fragile body shall thou be, when endued with so much beauty, strong with love and joy and free, full of splendour, full of vigour that shall last eternally. Oh, it'll feel much better than this crocky old aching thing I've got now. <laughs> Let us pray. Renewed now with heavenly bread, by which faith is nourished hope increased, and charity strengthened. We pray, O Lord, that we may learn to hunger for Christ, the true and living bread, and strive to live by every word which proceeds from your mouth. We make our prayer through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, we Amen. thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. God 
give you grace to keep a holy Lent. May he protect you through the wilderness, that you may rejoice wholeheartedly at the Queen of Feasts. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, descend upon you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in the peace and the love of Christ. Thanks be to God.